Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tactical Tuesday. Tonight's topic is going to be, which pet is right for you? And no, he don't mean kids. <laughs> no, don't mean kids. Well, I unless you're talking critters. billy goat. The billy goats are kids, too. Baby billy goats are kids, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, if, uh, before we get into this, I do want to remind everybody, please share this out. Because uh, th there are some people that are making some horrendous mistakes when it comes to getting pets. And I speak from experience with my daughter and her husband right now. Oops. Yeah. But we'll get into that later. Okay. All right. Let's see who's all here first. All right. So uh, first one in here was uh, Keith Cronk. And he said he had a pet skunk. Then Aiden Air came in, Backwoods Law, and uh, Conservative Living in a Democratic Lifestyle came in, talking about uh, what they got, six goldfish, uh, better feed the bir birds, squirrels, and the rabbits outside. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. I got to put the kid to bed. Okay. All right, and see who else is in here. Back with, you know, I said backwards law. Mary Beth Smith came in. Everybody's talking back and forth. Garden State Gardeners here. Um, prep for it. Mouse toes. Mary Beth. Uh, Maccabeus. Everyday survival's here. And trying to keep up. Everybody's chatting. Good. I like everybody chatting. That's good. Uh, Al put in a put in an appearance. Remember, Al, you can't stay here long. Doctor says. You got to rest that eye. <laughs> oh, from his bedside. All right. He's in bed. All right. Christy Betts is here. Ginger Ninja's here. Gardner Josh is here. And we're caught up. Okay. So move this on to the next one there. Well, choosing the right pet is very important for multiple reasons, but the primary most important reason is the time you got to spend with it. And that's a problem. Some people don't. Hey, Kaylin Strain's in the house. And that's the problem some people just don't realize. And they go out, they get a, get, they get a, uh, a, a dog or a cat or whatever. More particularly happens with dogs froze they get a dog oh dogs take care of themselves we just let them out to go poop and feed them and you know we don't have to train them yeah that was so much the problem with what my daughter did with uh the first dog they got didn't worry about training them. they got one, one that was older not a puppy that one that, that someone else had and turned in should have been a clue right there because they couldn't handle it they turned it in uh, the dog had been uh, abused a little bit, and the first several months they'd do, when they tried to get him outside, he'd sit, he'd go, <gasps> and pee right where he was at, on the floor. Not good. And then um, they, they, find, you know, he, they never tried to really train Calcifer. They'd let him outside. He'd do his business, come back to the door, and bark, 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 to let back in. He'd become a house dog, not an outdoor dog like they wanted. Well, they, you know, they found a family that wanted him, got, you know, turned him over, gave him all, fortunately they gave him warning. You know, he likes to do this. He wasn't, he wasn't harmful to animals or the kids or anything. He's just that he was clumsy, a bull of the china shop running around, knocking, you know, type thing. And up oh, Shady Hills Homestead is here. Hey. And so they got rid of uh, Calcifer, got another dog. Why they got this other dog, I don't know. They got a, uh, I think it was about a nine-month-old, maybe a year-old um, husky. Huskies do not like hot weather. It's been in the 90s around here. I mean, it's not the thing for, for um, that type of dog. Plus, that that dog had killed the, one of the neighbor's chickens. Wait a minute. We got chickens here, rabbits, and, you know, and they're getting a dog that has tasted blood. What does the dog do the first hour it's in the house? 
They had they had a cage set up with uh, some rabbits in there. Kills one of the rabbits. So yeah, so they uh, and they oh we, we can break them of it. We can break them of it. I said that dog is going to be trouble. It's been abused. I can tell by the first time I saw it. Um, it tried growling at me when I was playing with one of the kids. It, you know, and I said it's gonna it's gonna snap at one of the boys. And sure enough, about two weeks later, it snapped at little Oliver, not even a year old, snapped at him and turned around and growled at um, my daughter. And off it went back to the pound. So, yeah, two, you know, some people have got to learn to what they what the responsibilities are of having a pet and what they got to do. But let's get into the slideshow here. And so right there saying you're not just cats and dogs. There's a lot of different animals that um, you can have as pets. You definitely don't want a pet that snaps and hisses at any member of your family. Now, this is the first sign. Of, okay, sorry, this one's got to go. You also don't want a pet that's going to cause you problems. There are not just cats and dogs that ha give people allergies. Certain reptiles cause people to have allergies. And certain other type of animals ca cause allergies as well. Uh, what about roosters? Where do they fit in? Well, I'll, um, I'll, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, squirrel diverge here. Roosters are great. I mean, for at least for me, my first pet was a rooster. I was, uh, five years old and a neighbor gave us a rooster. He, Charlie was well-trained. He would sit on my shoulder. He'd walk around with me anywhere. Um, the reason why he had to get rid of it because the neighbors were complaining that Charlie, because Charlie was, would crow in the morning. So they came out where we were, and we had other chickens and stuff, and they gave us a chicken. And Charlie sat on my shoulder, so Charlie made a great one for me. And so that was my first pet. All right, so, so you don't want an animal so it'll cause you problems. Yes, they're cute. Don't let their cuteness guide you in, buy, in uh, getting a pet. It's like, oh, that's so cute. I got to have that one. And then... A week later, you realize I should never have gotten this animal. It's nothing but trouble. I, it's, it's pooping in the wrong spots. It's eating all the time. It's you know meowing at me in the middle. Climbs on my uh, up on my bed and climbs on my head in the middle of the night. And that also goes for these type too. <coughs> so you got to. You know, make also make sure that your pet is well trained so it gets along with other animals. Yeah, they're they're nice and cute. This is about what the what the the one my daughter had looked like. But yeah, if they if if you're going to get a dog, you got to get it as in my personal opinion, you got to get it as a puppy and either train it yourself, spend the time, the hours with it, training it, making sure it bonds with a member of the family, uh, working, uh, if you need to, you can hire a trainer to train the dog, but the dog's gonna have a specific duty. And we'll talk about uh, dog duties here at the, uh, at the end here. Then there's birds. We've had a lot of friends that have had birds, everything from um, cockatiels to cockatoos, um, the things, the stories I can tell you about, uh, my wife's friends, uh, cockati cockatiels, um, you know, uh, it's just hilarious. Some of the things they would do a friend of mine, a uh, very good friend of mine, um, who was actually one of the founding members of the band journey had, uh, was raising, um, cockatoos, the big ones. And, you know, he'd bring them over and it was kind of hard. My boys at the time were, you know, preteen. It was kind of hard. Don't, don't rush the birds. So, and so birds are, uh, are really neat. They're colorful. They poop wherever the heck they want. 
And if you have them fly, letting them out to fly around the house, expect them to poop all over the house. All right, Mary Beth, make me one too. <laughs> uh, there is, uh, you know, I mean, they're probably though, if you have a large enough cage for them and several of them where they can get along, probably one of the easiest pets to feed and forget. A lot of people for their first pet, they get a little bunny rabbit at Easter for their kids and they're not ready for when that little cute bunny grows up and turns into a full size rabbit. And people, most people don't realize um, rabbits kick and they got little sharp toenail spurs there that they can just tear you up. So, you know, what's the way I was like, don't get a, oh, if you value your hearing. Yeah, some of them can be very loud. Uh, Ginger, my best friend's uh, one of her cockatiels named Bam Bam. If my wife took off her shoes and had her feet up, he'd fly on top of her foot and leave a different type of deposit on her foot. All right. Uh, next one here. Goldfish is another uh, one that you, you, well, you can't wait. With birds, you can actually fill the feeder up and they can feed from the feeder. Fish, you got to feed every day because if you dump too much fish, fish food in there at the beginning, they're just going to devour it, get sick, and everything else. But uh, if you have the time, fish are ones you just got to remember to feed them, keep the water clean. If you go on vacation, though, you got to have someone to check out your fish. Or otherwise, you're going to be coming back to an upside down fish. Um, outdoor fish, koi. I had I had a huge koi pond, and I had twenty some odd koi out there. Koi become expensive to take care of, but I learned a lot. And if I could, I would get koi again. But it was just, uh, it was koi, it was one of those ones, is a high maintenance um, pet. And uh, most people don't raise them as pets, they raise them at for you know, to sell, for show, and stuff like that. Let's see. Um, oh, comment there. Where was it? Where was it? Okay. Yeah. Down in Australia, they're having problems with people dumping goldfish out in the streams and stuff. Those little itty bitty goldfish, when they're out in the wild, start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And there are some pictures of some horrendously monstrous um, goldfish down there in Australia that have been put out. In <laughs> Uh, James back, I froze. Uh, but they get put out into the streams, and they just get huge. See, I had to make right, my uh, I had to make my entrance. Yep. All right, um, and then there's reptiles. My brother-in-law had several different reptiles in their house, and he had some pretty big, pretty big ones too. And there are a lot of different reptiles. That people choose from and yes they had snakes too some of the reptiles and they had turtles and I forgot to enlarge that bigger sorry but yeah there's um, and a turtle was my third pet <laughs> I had a desert tortoise that wandered into the yard and kept him for about four years and then he wandered off and then we moved before I could eat before he came back but uh, yeah uh oh so there are charts for determining if you want to get a reptile of what you need to uh, what you need to know about them. And interesting things you go like how big does it get? You know, how it lives to be five years, ten years, fifteen, fifteen to thirty, thirty, fifty plus years, fifty, you know, all, all sorts of different and what they eat and everything, environments. Oh, no. So there's a lot of cool information out there. If you're going to get get a pet, get the information first. <laughs> Study it. See what changes you're going to have to make to your lifestyle before you get a pet. Because, hey, it's like having a baby. 
things change. It changes your whole uh, what it, schedule, your whole uh, you know lifestyle. Still not the word I was looking for, but hey. Okay, what did oh, that reptile chart looked like a ballot. <laughs> okay, there's okay. Okay, and now we're going to start talking about some of the working, you know, wor working dogs there are. This is called the livestock guardian dog, and they're trained specifically for this. You get one, you you buy it, either you can buy one fully trained, or you buy a puppy when it gets a certain age. You take it to a professional trainer. They train it. They work with you. I'm, uh, there's a lot involved with uh, a livestock do uh, guardian dog being trained. But, yeah, they they work with the uh, sheep, the cows, the horses, the goats, you know, the pigs, whatever. They train them. And there's some good channels out there, homesteading channels, that have shown their livestock dog working, um, keeping it Dutch. There's one that comes to mind, uh, Imagine Acre Wood. Um, good, simple living. Uh, there's uh, several of them that ha have them and do it. What's funny? I oh, just reading Josh's comment. What Josh say? Oh, okay, yeah, the rip. Yeah, okay. Hey, I'm a little slow. I was trying to find two channels, you know. Yeah. So uh, types of livestock guardian dog breeds. There's a bunch, as you can see. Uh, Great Pyrenees uh, is one of the favorite ones they use. There's, uh, you know, shepherds. You know, that's what, hey, shepherds, whether it's a German shepherd, Georgian shepherd, um, Bovakia shepherd, because, hey, they're shepherds. They work sheep. All right, so there's a lot of them out there that are really good for that. And if it's a really good livestock dog and it bonds to one of your kids, so much the better because it then also becomes a protector of your kid as well as the livestock. And then, of course, there are the other ones. My favorites. One of my <laughs> favorites. Yeah. They're the ones that are guard dogs. And there are a bunch of different type guard guard dogs. I want to add again. something real fast before you go too far, because either A, I'm going to forget, or we'll go okay. to on something else. Go ahead. There's one key thing about Do Doberman Pinschers that 90% of people who get them for guard dogs do not understand. Doberman Pinschers. Yeah, da, 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 da. I had a Charlie Brown moment there. Doberman Pinschers have a very severe flaw due to crossbreeding and everything to create the Doberman Pinscher. Doberman pinchers, as they grow older, their brain grows bigger than the skull they have can hold. It literally drives them insane. Having raised two from pups, and we lost a third one due to cancer, but I had an American, well, it's my stepdad's, and we had a German breed. There's two different breeds of Doberman pincher. One is American, one is German. The American has a tendency to go nuts first. Um, she was seven when she started losing it and the german breed was 10 before it started exhibiting the signs that had to make it get put down so if you're considering a doberman pincher realize that it is about a seven year lifespan dog before you put it down you put it down so the dog does not suffer if you want to keep dog longer then pick a more appropriate animal mm -hmm. that's it for now yeah uh, okay so, yeah, there are a lot of different ones. Uh, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, Mastiffs. Um, there are a lot of different ones that are listed here that are um, guard dog uh, breeds. Now, there's one that's not listed here. Belgian Malinois. That, that, that um, I know several, you know, my, my cousin when he came back to Vietnam was a dog handler and he trained dogs and he liked training this particular breed. It's not your normal guard dog breed. It's a mm -hmm. St. Bernard. True backwoods. And St. Bernards are, you know, you, you get a 300-pound St. Bernard charging at you. Yeah. Even if he, does, uh, if he doesn't bite you, if he just knocks you down, he'll go <laughs> all over your face and you wish he bit you instead. The Spanish Mastiff will do the same thing. It slobbers yeah. worse than 90% of other dogs. 
You can put a bowl under it and then feed it to another animal like two minutes later because it'll be full. Yeah. Oh. I I've I seen that. I wasn't going to comment on that. I think I need a bigger box. Hey, Steve's here. He's lurking, working on stuff. Steve, do you have a dog that is a guard dog or just that one that just sits there and goes at you during your live streams? <laughs> Yeah, backwards. I was actually going to uh, work with several local sheriff's departments on adopting a police dog when it was retired, but due to current living situation, I can't do that because I do know all the commands. Matter of fact, on my Discord, I posted it once. Um, all the proper commands for re police dogs, the language that they're trained in, so you know all the proper commands like sit, attack, stay, you know, the proper words to use. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I can't do that where I'm at. Yeah. Bummer. So I think this is the last slide. Let's see. Yeah. So let's go back. Okay. Now I got two channels. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, folks, if you're, you know, if you're on a farm or a homestead, you're going to want to pick out, if you're going to get a dog, you, you know, you want one that has that is at least partially trained to look after the livestock as well. Uh, Daniel uh, at Armstrong Homestead has two of them. One he's re he when he retired as a livestock dog, they brought it into the house. The other one is out there. So, um, but uh, if you're going to do it to get do a guard dog, get it properly trained and get the training yourself as well. Yeah, you know, a good guard dog is only as good as its owner. And if you yeah. don't treat it properly, uh, word of warning, if you do not treat a properly trained guard dog with the proper amount of exercise, the proper amount of continued training, and they will teach you how to keep training your dog, um, it will eventually turn on you. Yeah. Because it's going to suddenly assume it's the alpha and you're not, and that's not a fight you want to deal with. Yeah. All righty, so let me go ahead and take this down and put this one up, which Dave wants to put up there. Okay, if you are looking at getting a pooch of any kind, that can, especially for homesteaders, I would highly recommend going over here to Animal Watch. As you can see, I am subscribed to her. Um, she does a lot of great work reaching out to help mainly wolves. But as you can see, she, you know, she does exposés on different dogs, and she's covered everything from your common, you know, guard variety, homesteaders, sheepdog, to the more ferocious and uh, you don't mess with this type of dog because it's almost as big as I am. So if you want to learn about animals and you're unsure of feeding requirements and, and the proper care of dogs. Check her out, look through her channels, find the dog you're thinking of, and see what she has to say. I would trust this young lady. If she walked up to me and said, this dog is perfect for you, I would take her 100% at her word. All right, and there's the, li there's the link to her channel. Okay. Now I'm going to have to drop this one real quick so I can bring the other one up. So stop screen, share yeah. screen, uh, Chrome tab. Uh, and this young lady, gotta love carpet pythons. She is an yes. Aussie. She is from down under. This lady knows more about the cute little reptiles that crawl across your carpet and go when you least expect it. Um, if you want great information, this young lady right here, get my mouse over here, can uh, you know start socializing your snakes from babies. And she talks about pythons and other snakes you know go give her a sub as you can see i am subscribed have been for a couple of years now she's an awesome young lady i kind of miss seeing her around but you know she's in australia she can't always make it on our time schedule so go check her out give me a second and i'll put her link in there we go controls no don't buy a pit bull from a trailer park no There you go. Matter of fact, the link. 
And here, here's a buying tip. If you're looking at buying a dog that somebody else has owned and you, the best thing to do is for you to go check it out in its current living environment. Don't let them bring it to you. Go check it out where it's currently living. <laughs> if it's got a very clean run area, that's good. If the dog has a bunch of scars on it, walk away. The, mm -hmm. Unless you are the kind that can feel sorry for basket cases and have the ability to deal with it. And the time. Because a dog that is heavily scarred has probably been severely misused and mistreated and either, will either A, be overly aggressive or be overly submissive. And you don't want either. Okay. Steve. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, okay. Then what are they talking about? I got that one. Oh, but, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. Just following the, uh, the, uh, the poking fun of each, at each other there in the side chat. <laughs> Uh, all right. And okay. So folks in the side chat, I know you've been talking about stuff. I do, this is not usually I, what I would pick from you guys, but I want to hear some, I won't say horror stories, but some instances where the, Things have gone wrong with people and their pets as far as they should never have gotten that pet and didn't train it right. You know, things you know of other people, whatever. Share the experiences so those that have come on and watch us that, you know, know what to do. Or we realize, okay, I don't need to get this one here. I need to go get it at the proper space place. Ah. Jehodak's a uh, ADBA registered pit breeder. I can't afford those. Yeah. And Gardner just, he lives in a trailer park, so. <laughs> hey, Chicken Ranch. Hey, Chicken Ranch. How's it going? And Samson Farms. Hey, Nathan. Someday right. I'll remember that, Nathan. I it just I old and I forget things way too easily in this day and age. Yeah, the only reason why I remember Nathan's name so well was from the uh, the movie um, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. That was John Wayne's character's name was Nathan. And he goes up to see the one chief and he goes and the chief goes, Yo, Nathan, take salt, drink whiskey, get crazy. So anybody you know, I come across named Nathan, that nickname will stick in my brain because of John Wayne and uh, she wore a yellow ribbon. <laughs> all right. Uh, I have to. All right. Uh, Kansas says, uh, Oh, that's hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Chicken Ranch is Dustin. Right above the one you clicked. Yeah, I see that. So, so he changed I, I, his name. So are you trying to be incognito and hiding from the wifey or are you just deliberately changing your name to confuse the rest of us like crazy? <laughs> Inquiring minds need to know. Or do you have a second channel that we need to know about? All right. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Courtney. All right. So, uh, Kaylin, uh, see if my friend had to move, couldn't I take both of us? So, uh, he brought one of the cats to, to uh, her. That's the way my, uh, my daughter wound up with her second cat was uh sort of was one of the neighbors was trying uh had a bunch of cats and trying to get it, get it away and so they brought it over here of course that it's not to met not to forget that my daughter had a cat when she was younger and when she went off to college she left the cat with us in california when she went to um uh, byu idaho and then got married and never had us bring the cat to her of course 
that she was rough house for that cat. That cat would scratch anybody and everybody except um, our oldest son, Alex. For some reason, that cat bonded with Alex and no one else. Hey, uh, Steve, I'm sorry, but, you know, only Marines have the guts to do that. So you have at that one, buddy. I ain't that gutsy. I'm staying away and using mace. Uh, what was, yeah, backwards. I'm just, years ago, we got a mixed dog from someone about six months old. Great dog until the first time we left it at home alone. No, no, yes, that's, that, not, that's not it. That's not the one we were talking about, though. No, no, I'm just looking at another one here. Oh, okay. I just going back, catching up on the chat. Backwards was. Uh, I, see the one above, I see the one above it that we that everyone was talking yep. about. Yep. And Steve said, no, just use your claws and teeth. And, uh, only Marines do that. I ain't that gutsy. Yeah. Unfortunately, we found uh, <laughs> more than one dog that uh, Mace did not work on. That's why uh, when I was uh, working for the Contra Costa Sheriff's Department out in what's, what was known as West Pittsburgh, or as we referred to it as Gunpoint, uh, all the deputies out there had cattle prods in their uh, cruisers. Uh, see. Okay, reading, catching up, I'm trying to find something good here. Hey, Frontier. Oh, 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 wow. So when you left him at home, he destroyed window blinds, doors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, you, you know, that's the thing is a dog has to be trained both to be an indoor dog and an outdoor dog. And they need to have an outdoor dog house, which is nice and comfortable. And you go on vacation if you got or for a weekend or whatever, where you can leave them so he can uh, doesn't, doesn't tear up things. Another, another quick little tip. Make sure the dog that you plan on getting is it can inhabit the climate you live in. Mm -hmm. Don't decide to get an Alaskan Malamute, which is deep bred and lived 90% of its heritage in very cold climates and expect to keep it down in Florida. If you do, you need to get your brain checked and send your dog northward. Okay, get short haired dogs that are designed to live in hot climates. If you live in a cold climate, the same rule applies. Get a dog that is designed to live in a colder climate climate yeah don't get an alaska husky where the temperature is uh, uh high 80s low 90s or higher yeah i'm still mad at my daughter for doing that that stinks sir back uh backwoods law the west pittsburgh i'm talking about doesn't have an h on it it's in pittsburgh california between uh concord and antioch or I conquered in Pittsburgh, and they changed the name because it was it, all there were a lot of ga uh, biker gangs and stuff there, and they changed the name from <coughs> West Pittsburgh to Bay Point, and everyone called it Gunpoint for years. It reminds me of the bar my mom used to work at when I was a kid. Oh yeah, it was called the Avalon. It was nicknamed the Knife and Gun Club. <laughs> Literally on the back side of the reservation. That tell mm. you why called that froze but i can guess <laughs> uh, the, uh, See, Chris, about, nobody speak, messes with you speaking about about the bars there in uh west pittsburgh we had a bar that we knew there was always something going on they had a. They had the police scan. We found out they had the police scanner sent to the main frequency, but they didn't have channel five on it. So we all went to channel five. Said, hey, let's go over to the bar. Went outside, and we all got back on. Hey, we got a report. There's a fight going on there. Let's head over there right now. And sure, if they all came running out, we were already lined up for them. <laughs> Steve, boy, they're all full of it this evening. <laughs> As my grandma used to say, "Y'all full of a bunch of piss and vinegar tonight." <laughs> Steve, look what he said. 
I, we were, he was talking about West Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I knew that because Pitts, West Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania has an H on the end. The California Pittsburgh doesn't. <laughs> but hey, did you see what uh, Corsair said to you? Well, I actually said it, uh, Bruce, but it was referring to you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve, be nice. Guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, um, pets. The one type of pets we haven't talked about at all are large pets. Horses. Oh, okay. I'm glad you went there. Yeah, because I've known more than a few people that have gotten horses. Oh, we're going to have horses. Oh, we can't have it here. So they arranged for it to be kept at a, um, uh, a little ranch thing that has all the stall, uh, st uh, uh, breeding, uh, stalls, and, uh, corrals, everything, take care of them. And, stuff. and the people go out, go out there every weekend. And then every other weekend, and then once a month, then it, once every other month, and the horses get neglected as far as human interaction all the time, other than the people at the place that are paid to go around and feed the horses. If you're yeah, going to get a horse. Horses require a lot of human interaction to make keep yeah. them rideable, first of all. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, the uh, my dad was in. Uh, all right, my dad was in the top ten all around cowboy for ten years. The year he quit, he met my mother. Ten months later, I came on the scene. But um, yeah, we. So I was raised with horses around, and he made sure we were out there. You know, not just during the week, but on Saturdays, we spent a couple hours out there with the horses, you know, every Saturday. And then during the week, you know, after we, you know, take care of the chores on the pl place, we'd go out, wander out back to the corral. And, you know, you know, little kids, we played with the one horse. It was called Buster. We could go in there. We could crawl on, hang on his legs. And he'd look down and just look at us. He was the tamest horse ever. He was a former um, studio horse, so he was used to working with you know talented people. And yeah, see, you know, my he, my first experience with a horse was not pleasant. Mm -hmm. they, her name was Sweetheart. Anything she was but, anything huh? but a sweetheart. She was an Arabian, unbroken, which Ooh. I didn't know at the time. Dave Haley, <sighs> which was the curator of Eagle Village's son, Kermit Haley, was the guy that started Eagle Village. Dave Hanley, his son, was the one that was trying to break Sweetheart. I did not know this at nine years old. They said, go pick a horse. I liked the way she looked. I liked the name. I walked up to her, fed her some oats, threw the saddle on her back, and led her back up to the corral. I thought, oh, wow, I got this handled. She had other plans. She tried <laughs> going underneath the fence while I was still riding in her and took my arm, which was holding onto the pommel because I was trying not to fall off, Um. She pinned my arm between the saddle and the fence rail. Oof. I had a scar up my arm for the longest time, about 20 inches long. I finally got off a of sweetheart. I punched her right square in the face, which everybody started screaming. She looked at me, and I never had a problem riding her after that. The only two people who could ever ride her were me and Dave Hanley, and they wound up selling her to somebody when she was like four years old because nobody else could ride her. Yeah, my mom had one horse that um, she picked out. It had uh, one brown eye, one blue eye, Star Baby. Uh, now, my remember, my dad was all around cowboy for 10 years. His best friend, George Duke, was in the rodeo for like five or six years. My dad never could ride uh, Star Baby more than 20 seconds. George would get on Star Baby. Star Baby would sit and lean and lean back till he fell off. The only one Star Baby didn't bite was my younger brother. 
and he was born in 50, so he was four or five years old at the time. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, you know, one, one of my yeah, I, dream, I dream pets is to have, we, 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 I want to get a Clydesdale, but not for a couple more years till I get everything around here uh, cleaned up because I'll believe you haven't spent a lot of time with that horse. You know, Bob, that left to so many open comments that were, could be mistakenly horribly bad in so many ways that I will refrain from going back to my younger years and stating such. <laughs> yeah. But you have to realize it's so hard not to. Yeah. Now, just... All right. The last pet I had, besides my koi fish, the last mammal pet I had, and I've had hamsters, which I didn't put in there, hamsters, the other rodents and stuff as well. But I had hamsters and I was in, in, in uh, elementary school and stuff. But the last pet I had was a dog, a uh, black lab golden retriever mix. Uh, her name was Princess. She was named that because we'd just seen the original Star Wars movie. And her ears were kind of curled up a little funny and it's, oh, Princess Leia. <laughs> And that was the last dog I had, uh, the last pet I had really like that because, uh, you know, she was a great dog. I could, I had to keep the sleeping bag in the front room. She'd sleep on top of it. I'd crawl inside her and go, Arr! and she'd play and everything else and bite and drag me around, but not really biting hard. And then she'd come up inside and lick me to death. Um, she got hit by a car that was speeding down the road. You know, 25 zone was doing 65. And that was the last pet I had that way. And I just, you know, I just, you know, for me, it's a hard time, you know, to think about getting a dog myself. Now, my young, my youngest son, Matthew, who's going to be 22 next month. When he comes, when he moves up here, he wants to get a dog and it's fine. But you, I mean, my wife and I both told him, no, you have, you can't do like your sister did. You're going to have to get him as a puppy get them trained, work with the trainer, get yourself trained to be a proper dog owner. And then you can have the dog and do, you know, once it's fully trained, you can do whatever you want with them. But you need to, you know, take care of them, spend time with them. And yeah. All right. So did, did uh, Dustin ever say why he changed his name to Chicken Ranch? Uh, probably because he's just playing chicken. He's running around with a broken wing right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, does anybody have? <laughs> so, Court, since Dustin's not saying Courtney, why did Dustin change the name of his channel, or is this a second channel for him? <laughs> Yeah, backwards, that's my problem. I am trying my darndest to be more polite than the evil thoughts that ran through my mind when Bob made that comment. Because, boy, I tell you, having been a truck driver, knowing Joseph, it'll make sailors blush. I had a comment to that that came right straight to my mind, but my mouth said, don't say it. <laughs> uh, saw some awesome heifers tonight, too. Okay. Well, then should, uh, so, it be, should it be Heifer Ranch then? <laughs> no, earlier she said saw some, saw some, uh, where is it? She Quite said, uh, yeah, she said something about chickens earlier. Oh. oh, she also said, ask about hedgehogs. And Funny. actually, my mother in law wanted to get a hedgehog. I'm just looking back here. Miss Courtney said we're number one, or at least one of us is number one. Probably me. Yeah. I've been called number one many times. Matter of fact, YouTube said I was such a number one person that they had to ban me for a week. <laughs> I thought they were calling you a number two person then. No, 
Number two is just a warning. Number one is you get booted off for a whole week. If I do it again, I get booted off for two weeks. Uh, she doesn't want cows. Hey, beef cows aren't, aren't, aren't that much of a problem. Hey, you need to have milking food. cows. Been there, did that in the snow, ain't doing it again. No, in all honesty, for a smaller place, if you can build a place to house them, two cows, we'd be ideal. One a milking cow, one you raise for beef. When you go to slaughter that one and share the expenses with a family member or somebody else in the community, get another one, raise it up for beef. Yeah. And have your milking cow. If you need help understanding where to go with all that, go check out Big Bear Homestead. Yeah. Now we, we had two um, milk cows at the one point when we uh, had moved back from Arizona to California. We had, they had a, a Guernsey Jersey mix that gave a quart of heavy, heavy, heavy cream per gallon of milk. But her teats were so small, you couldn't milk it the normal way. You had to strip the entire time. Do that to get four gallons of milk. No yeah. And then, and, and, and sometimes sometimes the one every now and then would, would spray <laughs> sideways on you. And, 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 and it's snowing outside. So cold it froze him. Yes, I froze. Just thinking about it. My I'm only experience the, with my yeah, only experience cool. with cattle was two different foster homes that I went through as a child, both of which had lots of milk cows, lots of goats, all kinds of farm animals to deal with. In my first few weeks on the farm, I had the chit job. That's all I did was clean chit. Yep. And uh, Cross Timber Bisons is Daniel Arms' brother-in-law. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we actually, uh, uh, the, the last time the, the cows started to dry up, my dad uh, took them out and got them bred with, to, some, uh, to some paper Black Angus steers that the guy owed him a favor. And so we, uh, we had two steers off of uh not, not steers black angus bulls and we wound up with two steers yes we did the thing and um bob hey uh josh i didn't know jersey cows watched dexter show so are those the kind of cows we have to worry about going mad and having knives hidden in the <laughs> barn and chopping people up yeah <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, Dustin, you need to change your, uh, your name because it's been, you're going to get renamed and called something else. It's not a pretty thing. Either that you can have someone coming, coming by, you know, pretending to be, um, uh, Burt Reynolds and someone else pretending to be Dolly Parton. If anybody gets that drift well for that oh, one. Dear. Oh. All righty. <laughs> Trained attack cows. I can just see now, morning of the zombie apocalypse, a herd of 60 trained attack cows roaming the streets. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah, some people like to have geese or ducks as pets. Geese, my, my wife, they had, had geese when she was growing up. The geese were attack geese. And yeah, my, friend, my friend decided, of course, this was many, many years ago, but he thought it was a smart idea because his grandparents owned a farm that had no livestock. He decided it would be funny to get a couple geese until said geese chased him around the farm. Then he decided it wasn't funny no more. Yeah. It got to the point where I couldn't even get on the property without the geese going nuts. Of course, it may have had something to do with my car being super loud and, you know, well, didn't like that. 
I'm, I'm going to tell a story on my wife. I'm only going to tell it because she keeps telling people about it. Uh, when my wife was at living at home and they had the geese, <laughs> she had um, a pro she had a, a unusual ways of blowing her nose, and when she blow her nose, it, it, the geese would answer back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Bob. Oh, poor Dustin. Which one? What? What? what where? Dustin is in cave to cave to peer pressure. <laughs> Did he change it back? Yeah, he put it back to Courtney's husband. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Now, um, Dustin, you can't change it again. What is it for sixty days? You only change it twice in sixty days, or thirty days, or something like that, and then they make you wait, or you can change it again. Yeah, we Anyways, went from talking yeah. about what pet should you have to what a whole slew of bad things. Uh, let's see. Uh, other pets we missed out on. Hey, Stringfield. Hey, Teresa. So, yeah, the um, – so if you, if you have decent amount of land and you're going to get your – and you're going to be raised in livestock, you might want to get yourself a livestock uh, guard dog, but make sure it is properly trained. Or live – sorry, live – Disney impression again. Livestock guardian dog. No, Bob. Um, uh, Steve does not have a pet Wolverine. <laughs> the Wolverine would be cowering in fear all the time, constantly, anyway. <laughs> all right. I'm not sure. We got a few came through from it. So hang on here. Let me get this right. So just a quick review here. Well, you want to avoid this if you're getting a pet. You don't want one that's snapping at hissing at family members. And you got to make sure you're not going to be allergic to that pet, whether it's a cat, a dog, a horse, um, a reptiles, because there are people that are allergic to certain reptiles, birds, you know. So just because the cat's cute doesn't mean you should get it. That one's just not cute. Just because because the puppy is cute doesn't mean you get it if you can't take care of it. Oh, who can resist some poor puppy eyes? Yeah, and you got to make sure whatever animal you get gets along with other animals, and make sure it's for your environment. Don't get an Alaska Husky if you live in the South or where the temperature is constantly above eighty degrees in the summertime. Birds take a little getting used to, and you got to be careful mm -hmm. about certain birds, about kids, uh, when you're not around, teaching the word to say, and you come back and a bird lets out a line of profanities, you can't unteach that. Nope. Yeah. So birds oh, are cute. Love birds. Yeah. Um, rabbits. Dinner food. You got to make sure if you get if, if somebody's getting a rabbit for Easter that you have plans for that rabbit either cages or whatever, so you're not having to release it into the wild. Fish takes time. You got you know fish. You got to clean the tanks and everything else and feed them. You know, koi's are outside and you got to really take care of their water. You got to have it. It's, it takes an expensive filter system for the koi. Reptiles, you got to have the proper heating source for them and the environment for them. <laughs> and there are lots of types <clears throat> of reptiles. Yes, conservative. Correct. New Zealand rabbits right next to the biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Turtles are probably the one of the easiest also, reptiles to take care of. Also, if you get the right breed 
can also be a source of food. Yep. So make sure you're choosing your reptiles right. And if you have getting a livestock guardian dog, pick the right one. And dogs, a person may have an allergy to one breed of dog, but not another breed. So if so, you make sure you spend time around the particular breed you're looking at to find out whether or not you have an allergy. Right. Certain long-haired dogs actually have an oil that's produced in their skin between the two coats of fur that they have. And some people are allergic to that. So a short-haired dog, which lives in a different temperate climate, may be more appropriate. And sometimes uh, certain dog breeds, um, while they don't shed a lot of hair, they shed a lot of skin. Mm -hmm. And my, my sister had, had a problem with one of those. Love birds are mean as heck to each other birds and loud for, yeah, you know, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the last of those. Yes, parents are very loud. Yeah, Cock cockatoos are loud too. Our I rabbit that is a lion. Said she'd be a mouthful, but her poop is great for the garden. <laughs> and that's the thing too, you know. Um, certain times you get certain animals, and the kids are going to think it's a pet when you're getting it for. Um, extra protein. So you have to, you know, be careful about um, that the kids know <laughs> in advance that this is not going to be a pet mm. and this one is going to be a pet. And that's one of the problems with, you know, kids and animals. Yeah, I, I got a rabbit as a pet when I was 12. No. 11 and by the time I was 12 it was dinner most adults are scared of chihuahuas well after seeing the Taco Bell commercial I can imagine why I think I need another bigger box no I just pick it up by the ears and toss it in the corner it's done I ain't afraid or, of it or as uh, Jeff Denham says punk Yeah, you, no, you got to see, you gotta see, you gotta see the show. Not Jeff Donham, it's Jeff Donham. Dot com. <laughs> if y'all don't understand that, you're going to just have to go watch some of his earlier stuff. Yeah. Especially about the one with the, with the chihuahua that had a stick in its mouth, not side to side, but straight forward. It was running through the house and dipped its head down and pull vaulted. Shish kebab. No, it pull vaulted. <laughs> All righty, so we're hitting the last the top of the hour here. Um, what's coming up here? So on Friday, on Friday night in the homestead on the Camp Patton Family Compound Channel, we'll be talking about, um, again, something that's in the news here, and it's going big right now, wildfires. Do you have a plan to cope with a wildfire on your homestead? There's and no such wildfires. That's climate change, damn it. And uh, we're going to be focusing on wildfires and your animals your livestock do you have a plan for dealing with your livestock if a wildfire comes towards your property and things you can do about that next tuesday here on tactical tuesday we're talking about emergency communications what's your plan so we'll be covering a large gambit of ways to uh communicate with the gear and then, uh, yeah. So those uh, are I will have to take a new picture of my cur the way I have it laid out now. Yeah. It will it will make a lot of people somewhat envious, and other people just go, "What the heck's he thinking?" Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's what's coming. That's what's coming up uh, this week and next week. And tomorrow, I should have out a new video from uh, off a of Camp Patton Family Compound, showing all the smoke. I encountered coming back from California this uh, couple days ago, 
And so it, it tied right into what we were talking about here last week, the dangers of uh, wildfire smoke. So that'll be out tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get it finished edited tonight. There are no aliens involved, Dustin. At least not yet. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, according to, according uh, Dustin, to our U.S. government. Dustin, yeah. Dustin, US that's US going after prison. your cow. It's going for your cow, Dustin. No. Our U.S. <laughs> government, certain people in our U.S. government say that the alien presence we are currently seeing is an attempt by them to ascertain the availability and effectiveness of our military system to see if we're worthy of invading or not. Well, all I need, need, need to do is watch our leaders and realize this place is well, crazy. If they, look at our, if they look at our current White House, they're going to say, this planet ain't even worth touching, and they're going to run the other direction. Or well, they're going to say, they're probably going to put this planet under quarantine. <laughs> they probably already did. We just don't know it yet. <laughs> all righty, folks. We're going to wrap it up here now, and we will catch you on Friday on uh, Camp Patton Family Compound. And, of course, tomorrow morning will be another Your Prep for the Day coming out. So, everyone, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and if you can, plan.